Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Two World Podcast. Um, this is a really special episode that we have today. As you can see, we're in the same room. Um, I am uh, your, the, one of the co-hosts. I'm Barney and of course right next to me is Jacob. <laughs> and um, back at the end of 2021, we were doing our reflection episode and thinking about what we were also looking forward to and we toyed with or suggested the possibility of doing a podcast together in the same room and here we are um so we thought the way that it the path that it took for me to get here and maybe some of the paths that i've had um traveling in the past have been a little bit bumpy or a little bit unexpected um twists and turns that we never quite anticipated Um, and we thought we would talk a little bit about travel and how we react in the midst of of these um, curveballs that we get, things that are unexpected, and and maybe how we have seen um, uh, maybe the reassurance that we get not from from ourselves or from our fellow passengers, but maybe that we kind of feel in our heart that we're feeling that we're being led along the right path despite um, the troubles that we're in the midst of. And um, I know I have a few stories, even including this current one that brought me here today, but um, Jacob, does anything come to mind for you, your own experience? Definitely. I know that uh, when you're traveling, you're more vulnerable because you don't have access to um, all of the supplies and things that you normally would at your house, and you're in territory that is probably less familiar. And one of my most recent stories of coming through a hardship while traveling was coming back actually during my sabbatical from Japan and having a gout attack Mm. (laughs) right before uh, you took me to the airport. And um, essentially what that involved is just um, swelling and inflammation and almost like I would call it like a shooting pain Mm. in in, um, my ankle, my right ankle. And... Um, it uh, feels like it's like a bad sprain. Mm-hmm. And so the, the thing is, um, a gout attack is, it can kind of also grow in intensity. And if you don't stay off of your foot, um, <laughs> it can be accentuated. And I had a lot of walking to do <laughs> in the airport. Oh. And so I just, I, I would pace myself. I would sit down and like rest a little bit. And then I would, I would walk like another jaunt. And mm-hmm. then I would go and sit for a mm-hmm. bit. And I worked my way across the first airport there in Narita. And um, when I got to my gate, all the seats were taken. Oh, and so no. I ended up just sitting on the floor, which I know is probably not the, the most mm-hmm. glamorous thing to mm-hmm. do, but I was like, I just can't stand mm-hmm. this whole time. And um, it was helpful to be on the plane mm-hmm. and have a long flight mm-hmm. and let, let mm-hmm. it rest. Uh, but then I had to navigate Chicago's airport, and then finally um, Cleveland's. And so I remember <laughs> the last bit when I got home, just limping. I'm like, I'm almost there, oh. out of the oh, Cleveland yeah. airport. And um, but I did feel God's presence through the midst of that, and mm-hmm. the whole trip itself, I felt God's presence and mm-hmm. time and, mm-hmm. and time again. And so I definitely felt that I wasn't alone. Um, and I was so happy once I got to my vehicle and drove home um, just just to be back and to see everyone and um, to share with them the joy of having been in Japan and get gifts for them that I had, mm. I had purchased mm. and everything. But but in the midst of it, it was uh, it was hard. So yeah. yeah, I know that on on this trip we uh, ended up in Cleveland and um, Yuma and I saw um, like the carts, the courtesy. Oh yeah, carts. Um, and you know, in Japan, we don't have those. Ah. Um, I, f- I feel like maybe the Narita Airport, it really is quite spacious, but maybe everything is a little bit closer mm. uh, in general than other airports. And I know from personal experience that Chicago is really, really laid out, really vast. Yes. Um, did yes. you have any kind of like people that you felt were like lending an extra hand along the way or like some kind of unexpected? kind of um, grace that you felt? I mean, I know in a way, you know, a lot of people say, you know, 12 hours on an airplane, how can you stand it? But 
in that case, 12 hours on an airplane with a little bit of salvation for you. Like relief. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I was sitting there and so grateful. I, uh-huh. I was on, just sitting. And uh-huh. So, yeah, there were a lot of friendly people. Um, I feel like, though, when I arrived in Chicago, I had to go through customs. Is that what it would be mm-hmm. called? And, um, and immigration, too. Immigration. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was very stressful. And so, um, in that window, I wouldn't say that there were necessarily a lot of people uh, offering to uh-huh. help, but at other points along the way, there were a lot of helpful uh-huh. people. Um, so I didn't really tell many people that I was having a gout attack, but, uh-huh. but um, definitely when I was in Japan, I felt there was just a lot of hospitality, mm-hmm. even in the airport. Mm-hmm. And some, yeah, back when I, when I arrived yeah. in the US, I did run into uh, a neighbor when I was back in Cleveland, they were coming home from a t- completely different <laughs> flight. Um, somebody who used to be the librarian here at the College of Worcester, Damon Hickey. I don't know if you ever met him, but but uh, he was the the director of the library, and he's retired now. But he and his wife are coming back from another trip, and we ran into each other. I'm limping along. He's like, "Are you okay?" Yeah, so really, yeah, so he, yeah. that was a sympathetic yeah, yeah, presence. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. said, "Oh, I just am having a gout attack." And he's, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And we had a nice little conversation, and then I went along on my way. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, how about for you? Um, did you encounter some some helpful pr- people along your your journey? That, that yeah, you I think uh, especially in terms of of helpful people, the um, the the one journey that sticks out the most is when again when I was in Thailand and um, when I went to visit some other people doing um, the the MCC program in India and they told me um, you know be sure that you get uh, a taxi voucher when you arrive and um, you know then they'll get you safely to where you want to go and my flight arrived around 11 at night I think and um, I asked for the voucher and they didn't give it to me and then for some reason it's one of those times that always something happens to you where you think oh well maybe that's just the way it goes you know and then um, and halfway along the way, then they stopped and and they said, you know, how much you're going to pay us? And I said, well, isn't it this much? And they're like, they're like, no, it's supposed to be, you know, $120. And I was like, you know, basically it was supposed to be $2. And they're like, I, was, I said, I don't have that much money on me. And they're like, how much do you have? And I was like, I have this much in rupees, like about $30. And they're like, oh, okay, that's fine. And then we went along our way, and then when we arrived at the the MCC place, um, it was closed up, and there were um, like rickshaw people were were sleeping in front of the gate, and um, the taxi people just left, and somehow the rickshaw people I felt like they understood what had happened to me, and they're really trying hard to help me to get in, like banging and trying to wake up the guard and everything, and then I I noticed. They were talking together and I could just get the sense that they're saying if we can't get him in here tonight we'll protect him you know he can stay with us and we'll keep him safe and um, and then eventually they got the guard woken up and got me inside and the oldest person there wanted money from me for helping me to get in and then like the younger guy he he like batted his hand away kind of like saying don't you know what this guy has been through today and um, how can you ask for money from him? And then um, they were so, I started my the very first few minutes of my time in India was really a miserable experience. And then they changed, changed around completely into this wonderful experience. And then of course the next day I did give them a little money for helping me. Um, and, and later on that trip, when I was going from Calcutta to Darjeeling where the, um, uh, the volunteers were, um, they said, you know, take, uh, you know, hire a jeep and a jeep will take you up the mountain. And then for some reason, the jeeps weren't working that day. And I just ran into a couple who were on their honeymoon, an Indian couple. And they're like, can we take your, you look so cool. And, you know, you know, basically, I don't know, maybe anyone who with white skin looks cool. Maybe, I don't know. And then can we take your picture? And then it's like, yeah, sure. And then we took a picture together and I was like, could you help me out? I don't know how to get to Darjeeling. And they're like, oh yeah, sure, of course. And then they arranged for the bus. And then when I got on the bus, I also realized, um, you know, everything's kind of unclear. And and I knew I would have to pay more, but I wasn't sure how much more. And then the guy beside me 
you know, he and I are communicating somehow, and I was like, it's like I'm like kind of showing him some of mine, and it's like, is this a much? And he's like, that's too much, too much. I was like, is this okay? And he's like, yeah, that's okay. So like my price and his price was just not kind of, he helped me get like the exact right amount without paying too much of nice. what it should be. And um, it's, it was so many unexpected things along the way, but really all that help, you know, that started off as it could have been so much trouble. And when <laughs> I was leaving the country then, um, I overheard a, a, someone from India, he was traveling maybe on the same flight as me, but we were all together in the um, departure lounge. And he said, you know, people who go to India, absolutely, there's only two possibilities. Either you had a terrible time and you never want to come back, or you had a good time and you want to come back again. And, um, and yeah, I wouldn't mind going back again, but it really didn't start off the way I expected it. Mm. Yeah, there's something uh, powerful about people who are hospitable and have local knowledge being willing to take you under their wing. And um, because that man helped you know how much to give or because the rickshaw drivers helped you get in, mm -hmm. you were safe, you felt cared for. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it makes me think about uh, having eyes to recognize um, other visitors when they're mm -hmm. in our midst. And mm -hmm. um, this past Sunday after church, um, I had a chance to talk with a, a visitor who is from Hong Kong mm -hmm. and he had just been in Worcester for two weeks and he's trying to get his driver's license. He's working for a local factory for a year and he didn't know anybody and he saw our church building wow. and he just came to wow. visit. Yeah. And so um, it was interesting to to talk with him a little bit and he was kind of curious about driving schools because evidently mm -hmm. the one in Worcester is very booked it's hard to get oh, in there he's on the waiting list and, yes oh, yes yeah. and so we were talking about that and then it was nice to see um, a couple members of our congregation Julie and Peter reach mm -hmm. out to him mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. person's this visitor's name was Chris mm -hmm. and um, just start giving some of that um, support that like you're describing that mm -hmm. for that comes from people who know the area mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. that's beautiful um, well um, in this most recent trip mm -hmm. um, were the things that happened that that kind of made made you rely on others or that you had to kind of navigate and figure uh, out yeah. as you were coming here and oh, what was that yeah. can you share that with us yeah um, I my kind of my um my goal you know i've done this a number of times you know flying you know through um standby and um you know which is if there is a seat available then i can get on the flight and if not then then try another flight um you know years and years ago uh Ayak and i um, would fly with my friends tickets from uh from a different airline and um you know, I, maybe i can think of a few times where we spent the whole day at the airport, um, you know, missing this flight, it's full, this flight's full, this flight's full, and then trying the next day, and maybe the next day we could get on, and that happened a few years in a row. Um, this time, then, we knew it was going to be really close, hoping to go to Chicago, um, and, um, you know, we thought maybe there's about 10 seats available, and my, my thought was that the only question would be if I who can I approach to maybe switch seats with me mm. so that I, Yuma and I can sit beside each other. And, and I also thought, looking at previous flights um, for the same airline, you know, um, the number of passengers decreased. Probably someone got COVID or something and couldn't make it um, or something just changed. And when we arrived, they, they actually said, well, economy is completely full, um, but... Uh, you can get business class. And I thought, wow, are they? Because I knew that um, uh, you're supposed to only be uh, 12 years old or older to get in there. And I thought, maybe they're making an exception for us. You know, maybe they realize that um, it's better to have two people on the plane at all than, you know, and get that little extra money than, than not. And so I thought, whoa. So I thought, I kept, I kept knowing that there would be some kind of blessing, some kind of, some kind of something tangible on on our trip and because I knew that you know people from Yacho are praying for us you know people here are praying for us 
you know, I'm free and force, you know, surely it's going to work out no problem. And then I couldn't get the tickets purchased. And then they realized, oh, it's because of this regulation, you know, that, you know, with, with, with your company, you know, if you're not 12. And, and they said, um, you can fly tomorrow on the flight to Hawaii. And then, because I, I knew the, the path from Hawaii was very open. Um, Hawaii to San Francisco, San Francisco to Cleveland. Um, it would just be an extra day, essentially. And But I knew that it was very, very um, open. That would go smoothly. And Yuma didn't want to do that. And, y you know, it's hard for kids to deal with disappointment. And he was really excited. And then, then I think the tangible thing was I suddenly remembered that we had been thinking about flying to Canada as an alternate possibility. Mm. But, but we really, it was... Ayoko and I were set to, okay, we'll just come tomorrow. And then Yuma didn't want to try that. And then I thought, let's try Canada. And, and it worked. And we got there. And they, um, they, they were um, hospitable about it. But they did say, you have to get your tickets ordered in 10 minutes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, then, <laughs> and then I, I overheard them. I'm not sure how much they were rearranging or if they were just searching, but they're like, you know, he's six, so he can't really sit beside himself. And I'm not sure if they kind of rearranged some seats or not, or if they just found the perfect two seats together. Because, you know, sometimes um, you're at the gate and you hear somebody get called ahead and they like switch seats around for that person. And I wasn't sure if they did that necessarily or if they just found the two perfect seats. But we could sit beside each other and, um, and then... Um, we got everything else arranged for for our flight and uh, for entry into Canada. And then um, that went fine. And then when we arrived, um, uh, we needed to stand by for our flight to Cleveland. And on the other airline that my friend worked for in the past, and we used it from time to time, um, they always put standby people from other airlines very bottom of the list oh. and they show the list on the monitors so you're always seeing you know it flips to you know this flight is destined for here and then you know flips these people are for upgrades and then flips these people are standby and you always see your name oh. at the very bottom <laughs> so the one the previous time you know um we were flying from san francisco to cleveland and and our names are at the very bottom and you know, they, they can be pretty strict where if you're not there exactly when they call you or if you don't let them know that you're there, then they won't call you. and Or they'll just skip to the next person. And so you're always thinking, I've got to be right there. I've got to sit right next to them. And this time, um, the Air Canada didn't have that kind of board or anything like that. And just when we arrived, you know, soon after, and then I saw the staff thought arrive and I thought, oh, should I go tell her that we're here and we're just staying by and not to worry about us? We're here and we're ready anytime. And I was like, but she looks like she's pretty busy, you know, checking things, so I don't want to disturb her. And then it wasn't longer that she said, you know, Martin, and I was like, yeah, that's me, that's me. <laughs> and um, I was like, thank you so much. Thank you so much for these seats because I could tell that they were beside each other. And, um, and it's such a small aircraft too that I knew there wouldn't be too much you know, um, leeway maybe. And then I was like, you know, we just got here from Japan and we're super tired and this is such a huge blessing for us. And um, she's like, oh, you're from Japan? She's like, I'm from Japan. I was like, whoa, oh. no way. And then I just said very many polite phrases to her in Japanese and then oh. she was she was happy about that. And, and then when we boarded, um, she saw Yuma's passport and she's like, Yuma, it's such a nice name. And oh. you know, it was really such a great way to finish that 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 flight of ours wow yeah. and by that point you were so relieved to have your seat and oh, yeah. to get Yuma in there mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's fantastic wow I'm so mm -hmm. I'm so grateful mm -hmm. uh, and then you got in in the evening like mm -hmm. later in the evening mm -hmm. what like nine ish or so I or? think that yeah, that was actually another kind of unexpected. I, th I thought maybe one of our other themes today is kind of like when things go wrong, but end up being um, a blessing. So 
um, our flight was supposed to leave at um, 640. Mm. And then um, I saw on the board that it was delayed already oh. um, by just like maybe 40 minutes or so. And that was a, a huge blessing for us because we, we arrived at 4.30 um, p.m., but um, we left at 5.30 p.m. the same day. And <laughs> oh, you were here in, in Ohio at 4.30? I, I know, in oh, Toronto. In yeah. Toronto, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, an hour before we left. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we would have had to, to rush, I feel, you know, because you never know security. If it was at 6.40, it's two hours, but you just never know. So ha- knowing that we had that extra 40 minutes, 50 minutes, was it was really nice that we could just kind of find our way and get through everything because um, there's a lot of forms to mm. fill out, you know, about um, vaccination and everything. And um, yeah, I mean, it's smooth enough. You just have to take your time and get it done. So that that was probably what m- some people might have thought was an inconvenience, but for us, it was just what we needed after after 12 hours on the, the airplane. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And then um, your parents picked you up? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you, when you got to their house, did you crash pretty quickly, or what? What, what happened after you? Yeah, I think that um, we made it to sleep fine, and then of course um, Yuma woke up at at three in the morning, or at maybe two in the morning or so, and kept saying, "I I was kind of awake then too," and kept saying, "You know, how do I go back to sleep? <laughs> how do I go back to sleep?" And thankfully, we called. Um, Ayako and chatted with her and then and then eventually around three in the morning then I noticed ah things are quiet again and then then I could get back to sleep too but um, yeah it's so nice to have these these kind of lifelines these unexpected things and like these things that we can rely on the people the people around us that we can rely on to, to keep us steady and then of course the unexpected blessings and gifts that we get that we you know really don't expect to receive. You know, I mean, what I mean, what are the odds that that the woman, the ticket woman, is from Japan, and we're mm-hmm. coming from Japan on a flight from Toronto to Cleveland of all things? So, yes, um, that's so interesting. I, I find that fascinating when there are those coincidences in travel, like I had mentioned, mm. coming back and running into the people we knew. Um, one time, I was coming back on a f- flight from a conference with a fellow pastor. And I happened to be a few seats in front of uh, the person who married one of my best friends from high school. <laughs> and uh, he came up to me as we were getting off the plane. He's like, JD. And I was like, because that's what yeah, my yeah, name yeah, was yeah. in high school. And I was uh-huh. like, yes, yes, Terry. Um, he's like, I couldn't believe I was coming back on this flight the <laughs> same when you were. And he, he had been on a personal retreat. And... Um, totally unrelated to my conference yeah. and we both happened to get this flight from Chicago to Cleveland at the oh, yeah. same time and um, I always love those coincidences yeah. um, it's amazing uh, well um, I just wanted to piggyback on what you were sharing mm-hmm. about um, travel and your children um, mm. we took a family trip to California last summer mm. and we were just so surprised at how at that point in time it was late June um, there was so much uncertainty with flying. Uh, the every flight that we were on was fully booked, um, and um, we flew through with Southwest. Uh-huh. And evidently, I guess with Southwest, you don't always have seat assignments. Oh, right, yeah, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, it was really important for us to try to have one of us sit with Hannah. Mm. And um, every single flight, somehow or another. It worked out like, and I just felt so blessed. I, I remember going up to the ticket to one of the agents um, to, at the counter and explaining our situation. And they're like, "Yes, yes, we will. As a family, we'll seat you oh, a little right. sooner." And um, and just the sense of relief when you're traveling and there's uncertainty when you actually get seated oh, on the plane and oh, when it man. takes off and you know you're you're <laughs> you're on your way towards your destination. Uh, when we were coming back, we were going to have to get a flight at like four in the morning oh, no. and so I called them the day before trying to see if there was any chance we could move to a later flight and uh-huh. I waited on hold for over an hour oh. and I got somebody and then they, they were like hello hello and I'm like yes yes it's me it's me. can you hear me and they're like hello and then they just hung up because oh, of the connection no. <laughs> but I, I finally got on the line 
uh, got somebody after waiting again mm-hmm. and they had the nicest person and they took care of us and so we were just so relieved and it was almost like part of the joy of coming home was just the fact that it opened up that we could <laughs> come home together and and and, and um, sit together and so when you travel with anyone but especially with children you really want to try to be together and so i hear you when you tell that part of the story and um at least from my experience on our end it was nice that it worked out too for us in that case so and i i know that like southwest kind of has the reputation of doing things differently and a lot of people like they're like i like that it's unassigned kind of first comes to first serve but yeah i mean if you're traveling by yourself maybe but when you're traveling with a family (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that sense of not knowing is really hard. For sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, um, it's interesting, too, when you're traveling and um, you're trying to um, to figure out the arrangements you need. I remember when I was in Japan visiting you and you helped set up a flight for me um, that was just a domestic flight mm-hmm. to Hiroshima and um, somebody must have communicated to or one of the flight attendants took notice when I came on the plane that I was that I didn't speak Japanese and that um, I might need a little extra direction mm. and so they sat me in like the front row wow. and, and um, when we were flying one of the flight attendant tenants came and said do you want to come see this and when we were flying over Mount Fuji oh, they put it out the window wow. and they, they checked really? in on me multiple times wow. yeah, just making sure everything was okay and um, it just means so much if you don't speak a language. Number one, have somebody help you set it oh, up. Man. But then number two, when there are those hospitable mm. people or one way being like, mm-hmm. um, oh, look at that. Or yeah. when you leave, you know, keep this in mind. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, yeah. I remember when I arrived, I was trying to get a bus and yeah. this, this gentleman was helping me. I was using Google Translate mm-hmm. on my phone and... Mm-hmm. and um, he looked really worried. <laughs> oh, no. He's like, he's like, you know, you, he was, we were going back and forth. He's like, you need this one. I'm like, uh-huh. okay, I, uh-huh. I think I've got it. And he's uh-huh. like, kind of like looking at me like, are you sure? Are you sure you yeah. but, but then, you know, he, he was a very kind presence and it felt nice that he was mm-hmm. worried for me. Um, like yeah. he cared. And so I did get there safely. So yeah, I was like thinking that. too, because I remember your flight arrived at, in the evening mm-hmm. and, and we were watching, we were kind of keeping tabs on your flight because I, I, I thought, you know, his flight, if it gets delayed, you know, what about the bus? Because it's the last bus, and would it leave? And and Ayako kept reassuring me that, you know, the bus goes there to take people into the city. It's not going to just say, well, they're not here, I'm going, you know, <laughs> an empty bus. So I worried about that, too, but I was really glad that that worked out. Yeah, it was, it, um, it worked out just fine, and people were very helpful mm-hmm. and at the at the bus area and also at the hotel and so yeah it was a great experience Mm -hmm. yeah have you kind of coming back to the one thing it's i mean you mentioned helping helping chris at church have you been on the other end as the person helping someone who's traveling like to navigate um you know the culture that you're in or maybe just sharing your personal um expertise or or the um uh, the knowledge that you've gained doing you know, traveling this way or that way yeah um i have a few experiences one that comes to mind is um when i studied abroad in israel at the hebrew university um, there were several waves of students coming throughout the summer and i had the advantage of being there um like pretty much the first mm-hmm. set of courses that were mm-hmm. offered and so some of the other students came in a few weeks after that and i remember a group of us went to the old city and then we were looking around and, and went outside um, to the Kidron Valley area where the um, Garden of Gethsemane is mm-hmm. thought to have been. And there's a special um, uh, church that is built there. And so we were looking at that area and then we needed to get a cab back to the um, campus. And so I knew how to ask, um, once we were picked up by a cab, how much it costs to get back to campus. Um, which is how much to Har Hetzofim, which is the name of the, the stop for our campus. And, and, the, and the person's like, how did you know that? And I, I'm like, well, you just, you know, if you've uh-huh. been there uh-huh. a few weeks. Uh-huh. Um, and so um, I wasn't a, a native, but sometimes you pick up a, enough mm-hmm. that you can at least share something. Mm-hmm. And so that was a case where I think 
those students appreciated, oh, somebody here at least knew how to get us back to campus. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. How about for you? Yeah, I think that most of mine comes from, thankfully, living in Narita, you know, which mm. is where the airport is. And so a lot of people will, it's either their first stop or maybe their last stop into the country. And um, then you, you, can, you get the sense when two people are traveling and they don't quite, they're, they're really unsure. And I think maybe in the past I might have thought, oh, well, they've got their phone, they can figure it out. Um, and then, you know, for the past while, then I, I think, well, why don't I just ask and see if they need some help? And I, yeah, a number of times, um, you know, signs are unclear or train stations are unclear or, you know, what path they should take is unclear. And yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that I can, you know, kind of step in. Do you guys need any help? Everything going okay? You know, any, any advice? And then, um, you know, I can, I can help them get to where they want to go because yeah Japan can be um, pretty intimidating when mm. um, it's the occasional person who who happens to speak a little English and um, maybe they don't quite maybe when you're the traveler you forget to speak slower maybe or if the person approaches you in English you think well their English must be super great and you just talk to them naturally and then they don't catch everything but then they don't want to seem like they don't know or they don't want to seem impolite or they don't want to lose face and so they they help you the best that they understood mm. and so they what you said and what they understood might not be the same and you might get directed to the wrong place uh, yeah um it, it's even it's even a, a a joke in osaka um that if you ask someone especially an older woman they they chances are 100 percent they don't know but they'll just tell you somewhere to oh. go <laughs> and it's even there's even a song um that they did kind of promoting osaka and and the people say clearly that we don't understand what you're saying but we'll tell you to go to this place anyway <laughs> and so um, so i feel uh. so since i understand and i've lived there enough and speak english and they speak english that we can i i think probably they feel more comfortable getting the information from me maybe oh sure mm -hmm. sure oh that's interesting uh well, since you mentioned um, the smartphone there, um, mm -hmm. maybe I could piggyback and just say when I was walking around one day there um, in Narita when I was visiting you, um, I had gone earlier in the morning to mm -hmm. Narita San Park and I was coming back past the Aeon Town Mall mm -hmm. and up towards the Richmond Hotel and there was this couple that were tourists and I must have had a shirt on that had English text uh -huh. or something and they came up to me and they're like, we were trying to find that area where the temples are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, I just came from that. And they said, well, well, how do you get there? And I said, well, I've been using my smartphone. Uh -huh. I just been uh -huh. using Google Maps. And, uh -huh. they, and they were like, of course. <laughs> and, and I told, I showed them like what I entered in and, and they entered uh -huh. in and it pulled up for them. Oh, and, yeah. and, and, and we were all happy mm -hmm. and thumbs up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so sometimes even when the technology's there, just a reminder of like what search term to enter in or somebody else who's doing it mm -hmm. can be a nice um, support. Oh, yeah. So, um, so uh, another story came up to mind mm -hmm. to me. Um, it's kind of from earlier in our conversation when we were talking about adversity. When my family um, and I went on a trip abroad, this was the only time we ever did something like this mm -hmm. as a family. My dad won um, uh, tickets to, to fly to France as wow. part of the contest in, in the business he worked for, for Prentice Hall. And um, so he took our family, and um, we had a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, but when we were the last day we were there, we were going um, to take this uh, like a ferry or something over the channel to England, uh -huh. and we had to get there at a certain point, and we were navigating the um, subway system. Mm. And um, my dad had planned very well for the trip, how much money we needed, but for some reason there was a miscalculation and we were short for the final, we got off at the wrong exit. Um, we would have been fine if we hadn't gotten off at the wrong exit, but we got yeah. off the wrong exit, so we had to get back on. Um, and we were short like like 20 cents, um, <laughs> like um, oh. something like that. Um, and so um, we had all of our, our luggage and we're standing uh -huh. there and these, these two people who were coming up beside us 
uh, were watching and one of them just reached in their oh. pocket and got us the the centime mm -hmm. back then that was before they had I think it was before they had adopted the euro mm -hmm. so they were still using mm -hmm. um, uh, so we had the vingt centime get, that they gave us oh. to get on that and the relief to have help from a, a just a, a kind passerby oh, yeah. to, to get them that little bit of money we needed to be, to then catch oh, wow. the subway to get us to the ferry boat which we did <sighs> make and we made it to England and on to the next step but all possible because oh, of that, that generosity yeah. Oh, so wow. yeah so thank you uh, whoever you are out there <laughs> <I know. laughs> for providing that that uh, that 20 cents for wow. us so yeah um, well um, so maybe we could transition a little bit and talk about like um, maybe how we have um, understood God's provision for us mm -hmm. when we're traveling or how travels have, have helped us be more aware of, of God's presence. Um, I feel like for me, there's something about travel that um, it gets me thinking. It's like um, being up in an airplane and looking at, literally looking mm -hmm. at the world from a different vantage point mm -hmm. and, um, and then being outside of my routine um, and then seeing people um, do, like, who are also traveling just like me and thinking about all the different destinations they're going to it's it's a humbling experience i feel like it partly can um, make a person reflective it can displace you a little bit or it can maybe um i don't know inspire you and so i feel like many many times when i've traveled or flown i've come back thinking about my life and what mm. i prioritize and mm. um, the trip to visit you in japan was a huge um like a retreat for me because every I didn't it's so funny when I'm here at home I have these rhythms and I tend to when I want to relax I want um, throughout the week I'll use media or other things mm -hmm. to entertain myself but every day after I would come back to my hotel I would just like sit and think back on the events of the day and just savor them you mm -hmm. know uh, take delight in them and think about them I didn't watch any shows or play any video games or anything when mm -hmm. I was there I just mm -hmm. it, let the experience kind of um, carry me along, and, and throughout that, there was a, it was a process of gratitude, like uh, thanking God for the day, and like thank you for providing this and for the safety here, and getting me to Hiroshima safely mm -hmm. and back, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and for the chance to connect with Barney. And um, so, um, have you found that to be the case for you when you travel? That it makes you sometimes reflective or yeah, grateful um, or oh yeah, especially. Um, Especially in my case, flying standby when when so much is out of my hands, and um, and then you know you always it always works out, and yeah, I mean, especially like when we were getting our tickets to, um, you know, when we got our tickets to Toronto, there was still so much stress of filling out you know the arrival forms and um, the um, vaccination information. Then you know the last like. Um, just was so much joy of getting those those tickets and and um, just you know so much gratitude and I said to Yuma how wonderful it was and how great the ticket person was and we said a little prayer together of thanks and um, yeah you're you're right like when you're traveling in any way but especially in this way um, you know, it, you're on the stormy seas and there's nothing around you to trust. You know, you, you can't, you know, you can't bend the rules. You can't, you know, like in our case, you know, we get to fly business class, you know, you can't bend the rules in that way. You can't, you know, people have to follow the rules for, for their sake and for the safety's sake and you have to follow the rules and, um, you know, you can't influence the outcome no matter what you do, you know, and, and that really is a case where, you know, you have to, you know, what does it do? How, you know, what does it gain you to worry about anything? Even though, of course, that's that's the natural reaction to worry, to try to feel like there's some kind of control if I if I worry about, it, yeah. you know. Um, but instead, all you can do, and then, um, is have a try to, you know, have a sense of trusting that things will work out, and and listening mm -hmm. posture, mm -hmm. and. And I knew in this case, especially, you know, even though I've traveled so many times and, you know, felt confident or, you know, even like maybe the flight was really empty and I got my boarding pass even the day before, mm. you know, 
In this case, I knew that Yuma was going to be watching me and, I, and, and seeing the way I react and deal with things. And so my huge prayer this time was to, just to e exhibit a posture of trusting mm -hmm. and, and relaxation, you know, in, in faith that, that knowing that things are going to work out. And um, I think Yuma also kind of tends to get a little bit anxious about things too, I think. And, and he didn't, not even one step of the way when it looked like things might not work out or we might not know what's going to happen or, um, you know, we might not get to sit beside each other um, on the plane. And, and he never once, you know, I, I, kept, I kept having in the thought in the back of my mind, um, you know, maybe I should lay it out for him. You know, this might happen or this might happen or this might happen and just be prepared, you know, um, thinking that if he's prepared, maybe he'll react to it better. But then that thought always was quashed by the thought that, um, you know, that's not necessarily going to happen. You know, we don't know what, I don't know what's going to happen. Why do I have to think about that? And then especially why do I have to explain it to him? That doesn't mm -hmm. do anything and then you know everything just worked out perfectly mm -hmm. yes it's uh, that's really interesting to hear and to think about um, like your journey and how you're processing everything and then how you're wanting to support Yuma and how he's processing everything and then the relief when things work out well and you can be there with him um, yeah, that's huge, and how God really provided for you there. Mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Um, Barney and I were talking earlier today about how uh, we were able to do a canoe trip earlier this week, and how interesting it was to um, get our kids together. Um, mm -hmm. Barney had Yuma mm -hmm. in a canoe, and I had our youngest, Hannah, and then our two other children, um, Aubrey and Micah, were in their own kayaks, and we were all adventuring along mm -hmm. there on the Tuscaroras River. <laughs> and... Um, it was interesting just to kind of uh, yeah, journey along together and have a nice meal afterwards. And I think we got to know Yuma some more. He got to know us. And mm -hmm. hopefully that's more an extension of that experience of, of um, going on a trip for you with him where you can show him things and, and provide hopefully in a way that he feels comfortable and is enjoying mm -hmm. um, not only during the travel, but then once... You know, you're here visiting with people, and I know it was fun to see Yuma play with our youngest a little bit in the car, uh -huh. heading uh -huh. back, and um, yeah, it's sweet. Uh, I think children help us be aware mm -hmm. of a lot of things mm -hmm. in the world around us that we would otherwise miss. So you could see when you were going in, along in the canoe, you know, Yuma would see certain things, and you uh -huh. could tell him, you uh -huh. know, about them, and um, it's nice to share th that part of travel as well, the mm. um, observation and um, and kind of naming what we see and discussing it and mm -hmm. um, enjoying the natural beauty. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, are there any other things that you'd like to touch on before we would draw things to a close? Yeah, I just thought that um, it was it's nice having someone to bounce these ideas off of and hear hear your experiences and um, yeah, especially think about um, like you mentioned the the fact that um, we're traveling in our own little area to our own little destination, but we're on the plane with other people, you know, going to their destinations too. And, um, and then, like you said, looking out the window and seeing, seeing the earth from a different perspective and seeing the, the beauty that you get to see from the plane and, um, just how, how, just how fantastic it is that, that we can do this and, um, have these experiences and that we can share them with the people around us and, and occasionally meet the unexpected you know, yes. friend and yes. and or or just kind of person that we didn't expect to help us out along the way too. Mm. So true. Yes, and um, we want to thank you for joining us and watching or listening to this episode. Uh, we hope that you too have remembered some of your own travels and ways that you encountered hospitable people along your journey, or maybe even ways that you could sense. Uh, God's presence with you as you were traveling or learn something about yourself uh, or about God or others through it. So um, we're so grateful and until next time.